Lisa has worked at NASA, at the European Space Agency. She has taught and conducted research throughout Europe, at Harvard, here at Cornell. She's the author of a fantastic book called Alien Earths, which I urge you all to read. And she has received too many awards for me to remember, and I'm just overjoyed to know her and to be able to introduce you to her today. Thank you so much for coming. And thank you so much for being here with us to celebrate what would have been Carl Sagan's 90th birthday. It is my great pleasure to be here at Cornell and actually coming to Cornell. Carl Sagan had a big reason for me to come here because a long time ago, he already realized that if we want to find life in the universe, an astronomer can't do this on our own. A biologist can't do this on their own, and I'm not dissing any of my colleagues who are amazing. We have to reconnect, because luckily, we live in a time where one person cannot know all of science anymore, because luckily there's so much to know. And so it is my great pleasure to bring you just a little bit in these short talks by many different people that are fellows at the Carl Science, at the Carl Sagan Institute here, some new insights and what we have discovered. But I wanted to say whenever I look up at the sky, I wonder what Carl Sagan would have thought of all these new worlds we have discovered. And I wish I could run into him in our coffee corner on the third floor. But I do live in his office now, so I get to look outside and see the campus like he would have seen it. And sometimes it helps me to pause on an incredibly busy day to just think, maybe he would have just stopped for a minute too and thought about the bigger picture. And that grounds me because the search that I'll share with you has just become the most exciting. Because we have now found more than 5,700 planets circling other stars, and we have 10,000 more that we just have to vet still. Did the detector do what they did? Did the telescope work? So we have thousands and thousands of new worlds circling other stars on our shore. And of course, we can get there, but light is a messenger. And throughout history, astronomers have captured light and read the information encoded in light because light and matter interact. And so when you look at this amazing image that the biggest space telescope we have launched yet, the James Webb Space Telescope has taken of the pillars of creation, it's a beautiful image. But once you analyze the light, you realize that there are stars being formed there right now, emerging and starting to burn the fusion in the core. So it's so much more than just the gorgeous image. It's a stellar nursery that we get to watch where stars and planets are just being formed. And I told you that we know that there are 5,700 planets orbiting other stars. But really, we also know how bad we are at finding them because planets are so small compared to big stars and bright stars. So from the number we find, we can tell you that every second star must have at least a planet and that every fifth star has a planet at the right distance, not too hot and not too cold, and small enough to be a rock. And with 200 billion stars in our galaxy alone, that means billions and billions of possibilities. But I can find signs of life in the cosmos on my own. 
And this is why it is such a pleasure to come here to Cornell and create the interdisciplinary Carl Sagan Institute, where people from more than 15 departments share their knowledge, and they are thinkers with different background, creatively trying to find life in the cosmos and make the toolkit to, for us to not miss it if it's out there. And from some of those, you will hear today, these are the people that you see in the blue boxes. And I hope you'll get a little bit of the excitement that is currently in the search. But you'll also see that we have musicians and performers here because this is excitement that we love to share. But how do we do this? And you'll hear a bit more about this in the next talk. Right now, we can only look at the air of a planet as small as ours, if it by chance goes between us and its star, and the light from the star crashes into the atoms and molecules of the air of the planet before getting to my telescope. And that residual light missing, so the light that's missing when it gets to my telescope, tells me what chemicals it encounters on its path. Because signs of life are written in the air or in the light of a planet. But this is at the verge of technical possibility. This is incredibly hard, even with the biggest telescope. And so even the James Webb Space Telescope is going to have a hard time getting to that precision for us. But for the first time, the search has changed from impossible to possible, trying to find life on planets circling other stars. And you'll also hear about the amazing discoveries in the solar system and how we're trying to find life here. But for a planet circling another star, another Earth, this is basically how it would look like if it were like the Earth. You see that there's some light missing. It's not just the solid line. And that light missing is the energy missing because light hit an oxygen molecule, because it hit a methane molecule, because it hit a water molecule and made them swing and rotate. And so the light didn't get to my telescope. And that's what we're looking for. But of course, another planet doesn't have to be a carbon copy of modern Earth. It could be very, very different from what we know here. And so we're building a light fingerprint database of possible habitable worlds, how their air could look like because there might be a biosphere changing it as well, how their surfaces could look like because biopigments color them. And we have a lot of challenges, opportunities, and adventures. And it is my pleasure and my enormous privilege to have such incredibly talented but also such kind, excited, and enthusiastic colleagues here to do this work with me. And we all, one way or another, were inspired by Carl Sagan and his way of seeing the cosmos and teaching us how to see. And with that, thank you very much, and we'll go to the next talk.